On today's episode, Tesla's Mega Pack is finally revealed, Powerwall keeps the lights on in Puerto Rico, Giga Berlin has begun clearing forest for its next expansion, and Panasonic will build their 4680 battery production plant in Kansas starting in November. After just over a year of radio silence, Tesla has finally showed us a peak inside their Megapack production mega factory in Lathrop, California. The Megapack is Tesla's largest energy storage system designed for grid scale energy projects. These storage systems can regulate green energy generated by solar and wind installations and also be used to support conventional power grids during peak usage times. A Megapack installation the size of a Walmart parking lot can support a small city with electricity for hours. On the 25th of October, Tesla uploaded this video on their LinkedIn page, which is the very first time we've seen anything from this facility since it broke ground in September of 2021. The video shows a complete and functioning production facility, which is quite a feat after just a year. Of course, it's a promotional video, and we don't have a lot of data on just how operational the mega factory is. Remember the old battery day video of the 4680 production line that looked like it was just flying, spitting out battery cells by the thousands? Well, two years later, they're still struggling to get it right. But sources are reporting that Tesla has the capacity to turn out 25 of the shipping container sized mega pack units per day, which would be very impressive if true. For reference, a single mega pack in its four hour configuration has a capacity of over 3,870 kilowatt hours. That's about the equivalent of 51 Model Ys with their 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. So putting out 25 mega packs is the equivalent of churning out over 1,200 Model Ys worth of energy storage. Not bad for a factory barely a year old. Up until now, all Megapacks and Powerwall units were produced at Tesla's Giga Nevada site, but this meant the company was only able to produce about 4 gigawatt hours of energy storage products over the last year, which is way behind Elon Musk's aim for 40 gigawatt hours per year. So Tesla began ramping up hiring for their mega factory back in September, with over 37 job openings appearing on their site around that time. And, as usual, this seems to have been part of the plan. Over just the last year, we've seen new Megapack projects starting up or being planned in Hawaii, Texas, California, New Mexico, Nevada. Existing projects in Australia were also proving their worth, and aside from the new facilities across the United States, other countries were starting to take notice, or in Slovenia's case, start to expand. The Eastern European country is part of a massive international energy grid, stretching from Turkey all the way to Norway. This grid is completely interconnected to its neighbors, so any failure along this line would result in failures across the whole service. But back in 2019, a local energy company called NGEN began setting up little megapack hubs in an effort to decentralize the whole thing. It was the first grid scale battery backup of this type in the Balkan region. And it seems to have worked well because a second larger project followed in 2020 and now NGEN has just launched a third. In total, the company will have about 60 megawatt hours of capacity to help that grid out. Kind of funny that the notoriously oil filled Balkans will have significant battery support soon. But this is what the Megapack is great for supporting existing grids and helping decentralize the load so a blackout doesn't leave everyone in the country dark. It's why Southern Australia is doing so well after they got their system working with a virtual power plant program and why Hawaii was finally able to kick coal power thanks to large scale megapack deployment. The demand for these systems is really growing fast. So with the goal to produce 40 megawatt hours per year out of the mega factory in California, Tesla could help set up two or three major battery farm projects per year and free up valuable space at Giga Nevada for other projects. Combine that with power walls and solar for individual homes, and that's a recipe for robust energy grids across the world. We definitely want to see more from this mega factory soon. And speaking of Tesla Energy, stories from Powerwall owners have been coming in since Hurricane Fiona tore up the East Coast in September. 
Many of those owners reported their systems were able to cover resulting power outages without much difficulty, but the most impressive stats come from Puerto Rico, where over 44,000 homes were kept running for an average of five days during the blackouts. Back in 2017, the island had been hit by Hurricane Maria, which all but wiped out the local power grid. Without much help from the US, Puerto Rico turned to Tesla, who was eager to prove their energy products could help in this exact situation. It's been five years now, and even though the island has been hit with more storms and their power grid is still having a rough time, Tesla has kept pace installing power walls. Now they cover about 44,000 homes, which was extremely handy when Hurricane Fiona tore through the Caribbean. The shaky electrical grid went down fast, but the reports are that Powerwall owners were able to keep their lights on for about five days on average. Many of the Powerwalls in Puerto Rico are also connected to solar panels, so some users were able to stay powered more consistently. Puerto Rico is a great case study for the use of emergency battery systems. There is no word on if the island is considering a virtual power plant like Australia and Hawaii, but once this storm season is over, the citizens there might look at these results and decide to network a bit. And Tesla isn't the only operator on the island, which is a good thing. The more people and companies see how useful battery storage systems are for creating decentralized power grids, the better. After all, the storms aren't letting up anytime soon. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. Cracking branches and fallen trees have signaled Tesla's next big expansion at their Berlin Gigafactory. The machines rolling into clear space for the next phase of Giga Berlin's expansion have cleared about 170 acres of forest just a bit smaller than the original 220 acres that was cleared when the original factory broke ground. In total, Tesla owns over 740 acres of land, which has been covered in a cultivated pine forest, originally meant for cardboard production. Local environmental groups have been famously unhappy that such a large patch of trees was being destroyed, but Tesla won their day in court and has pledged to plant new trees to make up for the loss of the pine plantation, even though it was going to be cut down for cardboard anyway. So, with all the environmental concerns covered, at least enough for the local Brandenburg government, Tesla is pushing ahead with this next major expansion. The only question is, what's going to be built there? Well, we know Tesla is always looking to ramp up production, and Giga Berlin recently grabbed permits for an expansion which includes a freight depot, train station, a kindergarten, and a bunch of logistics areas to support the increased production that's sure to be coming. That's the best bet for what is going to be built in this 170 acre plot. But we should also remember that Tesla is planning on starting and expanding battery production at Giga Berlin, so that's also a contender. And who knows, if they stack everything efficiently, maybe they could put all of that in this construction. Regardless, tree clearing is a good sign that construction will be starting soon. Utilities and other underground infrastructure will be next, and then we'll likely see the foundations being laid. Tesla is getting pretty efficient at this by now, so it shouldn't be more than a couple of months before we are breaking down the specifics of this new facility. Tesla is not the only one expanding. Battery partner Panasonic has announced that they will be breaking ground for their new North American facility in Kansas as soon as November of this year. The Japanese company has been helping Tesla by supplying batteries through Giga Nevada, but with Tesla and almost every other EV-capable company beginning a serious ramp-up in production next year. Panasonic is looking to establish themselves in the market early. Back in July, the battery maker earmarked Kansas as a potential site for its large factory, and the initial plan is to produce about 30 gigawatt hours of 4680 battery cells for Tesla once the plant fully ramps up by 2025 at the latest. Three years might seem like a lot of time, but we can't all be as efficient at building new factories as Tesla. And even though Tesla is making efforts to bring battery production in-house, they definitely need some support if their growth projections work out the way they expect. The Inflation Reduction Act seems to have spurred a bunch of new development in the green energy space as intended. 
So it's likely Panasonic is hoping to show that they could support more than one company with this facility. Because Kansas wasn't the only spot Panasonic had looked at. They reportedly were considering a site in Oklahoma as well. So if they can manage to secure contracts with more than just Tesla, Panasonic would be in a strong position to break ground on another factory. And hey, support for the swap to green energy is great. But this factory is also projected to create about 4,000 new jobs. So this is just good news all around. Welcome to Kansas, Panasonic. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.